Hi, everyone. Today on NLP Today, I guess you could call it, I'd like to talk a little bit about love and regret. I'm Dr. Will Horton, the, I guess you'd say, the founder of the National Federation of Neurolinguistic Psychology and Neurolinguistic Programming. And what I want to talk about today, again, is love and regret. And the reason I want to talk about it is I don't believe things happen by happenstance in our lives. Sometimes all these things seem to coincide and come together for some reason or whatever. And I believe that coincidence is an incident that you take action on. You know, you meet somebody that seems to be like a coincidence. Oh, I ran into somebody who uh, uh, can help me in my business or uh, we could start a relationship, whatever it is. So you have the incident of meeting, which seems random, but then you take action on it. Because if you have a coincidence and you don't take action, that ends up being a regret. And that's kind of why I want to talk about love and regret. Because we always talk about love and how we love people and we have, uh, how we have different kinds of love. You know, uh, of course, you know, family love and sexual love and, and even just, you know, good friend love and things like that. So I want to talk about that. And it ties in with a few things that are happening in my life currently and ongoing. I'm uh, currently directing a play. And the reason I decided to direct this play is there's two themes in it. Uh, one is this idea of love and regret, and the other is survivor's guilt. Next week, we'll be talking about survival's guilt and the idea of why me. But today, I want to talk about love and regret. And the play I'm directing uh, is called Ten Woman. It's about a woman who has heart failure, and she gets a heart transplant, and she meets the family of the donor. And in the family of the donor, the father's angry and bitter and explosive, drinking too much, everything you might do if you lost your loved one, it happened to be his son. And, and of course, in the course of the play, we find out what's going on. And it, when I read that scene and one other scene, it's why I decided I really want to direct this play. Because in the course of the play, we find out in a flashback that uh, uh, his last interaction with his son was a fight. And he yelled at his son, basically called him a loser. And then he, you know, then they went their separate ways for a while. The son lived in another town. And, well, I'll let him call me or I'm, uh, we'll wait. It'll blow over. He'll reach out. And then, of course, about a week later, he's killed in a car accident. And so how many times does that kind of thing happen? That, you know, we get, a, we get an argument, a, a fight, a, 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 a spat, if you will, maybe with a significant other or a family member or loved one, a coworker or even a mentor or a teacher, a coach, and then you keep meaning to get back and then life gets in the way and the next thing you know, when you mean to get back, it's too late, something's happened, you can't. And the reason this ties in currently with my life is I had someone at one point I was very close to, very close to, uh, Michael Elner, a great hypnotist from New York City, moved to Florida. In fact, we taught several classes together in the 90s and early 2000s. Um, uh, uh, train the medical professional, healing with hypnosis, uh, overcoming uh, uh, traumatic, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically terminal illnesses. We, we did a lot together, and, and, and he was very influential in my life. He's one of the first men that really reached out when I got in the world of hypnosis. Uh, I came from the alcohol and drug counseling world, and it was, he was welcoming and loving and and he meant a lot to me, you know, and his friendship, his sense of humor. He, he was funny. He was, yeah, I liked him. And we saw each other at all these conferences, especially back in the late 80s, early 90s, nine, up to probably 2004. Uh, we were like the bad pennies, people would say. We turned up at every conference everywhere. And, you know, we'd share rooms sometimes. We hung out. It was just a lot of fun. But then, you know, life gets in the way. His career took one path. I kind of went in this direction. It's that it wasn't that we weren't fun. You know, I saw him last year at the NGH. Before that, I saw him at the uh, IACT uh, uh, the year or so before that, and we spent some time. And, you know, I really loved the man. And then, of course, when he passed and I found out, I see all these beautiful tributes on, you know, Facebook and on in e-zines and people posting all this stuff. And it's remind, it reminds me of how many times you go to a funeral and people are saying all this wonderful thing about things about this person that, that's passed. And yet you sometimes wonder, did they tell them that when they were alive? Did they tell them all this? Maybe there was a fight. You know, maybe there was an argument. That's happened to a lot of us. And I like to think that true love really is when you look at someone and, and you can say, you know, I really love you. 
even though you're an asshole sometimes, because we're all assholes sometimes, you know, we're all, you know, and yet you, you got to overlook that sometimes. And yet we don't. And then when we go to reach out, it's too late. You know, in the last couple of years, this happened to several people I know. Jerry Kine, who I was very tight with uh, from the mid-90s to uh, 2003 or four. And it wasn't we had a big argument or went in any big spout. It's just different things were going on. And, you know, we didn't hang out like we used to. And then he's gone. And I'd see him at conferences and we would catch up. And I, we'd talk every once in a while on the phone and, and uh, stuff like that. It's just it gets in the way. So when was the last time you reached out and let someone, you know, uh, um, that, that they impacted you, that, that, uh, you love them, that they, they helped you in some way that, uh, they're not even aware of that they did. In fact, as I say this, there's someone I need to see if I can find even if they're still around, uh, because, uh, they impacted me a lot in the mid eighties and I moved to Florida, lost track, but I'd like to reach out now and say, you know, I think of you a lot because when I'm directing a play, I think of some of the things you talked about, you did, and, and all this other stuff. And yet, and yet some, maybe it's ego, maybe it's pride. Maybe it's the fact uh, it's hard for human beings to picture that this is going to end, you know, that this, this mortal coil, we're going to shake off. Everyone is. And you always think there's going to be tomorrow or tomorrow or the day after that. And there may not be. And so, you know, why do we wait till we have regret? And then we have the regret that I should have reached out. I should have picked up the phone. I should have uh, done something. And yet we don't. You know, and maybe it's the ego in the way. I'll wait for them to apologize to me. Uh, they wronged me or whatever it is. So, you know, and we, and we all see examples of that in the real world where people have accidents, people get uh, bad things happen in the world. And People are gone and, and you can't reach out and touch them anymore. And so as I say this, a lot of the stuff I talk about on my blog or my podcast and, and uh, on the video cast and put in this, like this one's also going in the e-zine is because there's so many people that were, that mentored me over the years that they might not even know they mentored me. You know, do I let them know that? Do I reach out and say, just thank you? You know, nothing in return. One of the recovery programs I, I'm always uh, uh, talking about teaches you to reach out like that, not expecting anything in return. You know, if there was an argument and you just reach out and say, you know, by the way, uh, you, you were still very impactful in my life and thank you. And they don't have to say anything back. What if they say, I still hate you, go away. But at least you reached out. And so from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank a lot of the people that listen to this podcast that, that are watching the video that read my e-zine because I've had thousands of mentors over the years, literally, because when I'm teaching a class, it's almost like every class teaches me something. Uh, every class has its own personality. Every, you know, then all the personalities in the class. And, and all these wonderful things that I've learned over the years really touch my heart. And this is coming up on a very emotional time of year for me. Um, and because of that, uh, uh, you know, I need to, to reach out and let people know these things. And so, you know, when we think about that, um, what can we do? Well, we can put aside the pride, put aside the ego. Uh, uh, of course, one way to look at ego is, I always say there's two ways. One is easing greatness out if you let your ego get in the way of making a good business decision. But in personal, interpersonal things, it's easing God out. What would, if you do believe in a higher power of God, what would God want you to do? Would he want you to carry a resentment and a grudge? Would he want you to be forgiving and loving? Um, you know, the, the treat others as you wish to be treated, turn the other cheek, reach out with love. And so for that, uh, it, you know, I'm responsible. And so I just wanted to talk about that today because it really impacts me. And I want to share this message with people all over. So I'd like to thank you. And, you know, if you like this, please pass it on. Uh, if you're watching this on, you know, Facebook or YouTube, please click like and share. I always add that in. Um, but thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a part of my life, even if it's distance. Because in the new world, the internet, we're, we're impacting people in ways we're not even aware of. And they're impacting us. So thank you. And I look forward to seeing you as we trudge the road to happy destiny.